there is about eight or nine telepaths as they're calling it at the moment. And these telepaths are uh, communicating with aliens telepathically. And uh, it's just faster. The main difference is that, you know, the aliens can speak English through technical means or through their mouths, but uh, some of them are, can do technical means, some of them uh, have vocal abilities. But, uh, but that channel is, for them, is very tiny. It's kind of, kind of going from a, a computer modem to a broadband. So telepathy is like a broadband. You, can, uh, you cannot lie in, uh, in telepathic way. You cannot fully lie in telepathic ways. You can lie a little bit. You can keep secrets, but, uh, but you can't really uh, be as de deceptful as humans are, uh, as deceptful as human, uh, humans are on Earth. So, so basically telepathy is the cure for deception. We have a lot of mind control and... Uh, mass media deception that will go away when we become telepathic. All races which we communicate up there, or most of them, are, are telepathic and they're fourth dimension. They are one dimension up. If we are third dimension, they are fourth dimension. So to, to speak to us, they have to come one dimension down and they have technology for that. So they can, using technology, they can appear and disappear. They also have all sorts of fancy things like holographic projections, they can project themselves. They are very spiritual, very highly spiritual. The higher dimension, the higher spiritual they are. So uh, they are speaking to spirits, they are communicating, they are very psychic, they are communicating with um, high level conscious. They have, they communicate with uh, some of our gods and um, they can actually visit humans and speak to them in their mind. Uh, what they cannot do, apparently they cannot read our minds. Most of our minds are not readable for them. So they work very hard in the colonies to develop the telepathy uh, in humans. And uh, they do group meditations and teach humans how to telepathically communicate. And that is uh, the fact that they were able to teach at least some humans to communicate telepathically was a big breakthrough for them because... Uh, it may give them much more hope that humanity will make that ascension transition. Uh, it's time for us to go up and, be and unite in one telepathic uh, race or species. Uh, all, uh, many others did it, and that's a standard way of, um, of the civilization to evolve from initially non-telepathic language-based to telepathic civilization. So that unification is the main essence of ascension. And their prediction is that ascension will take about 200 years. It started in 2012, as I understand, and they, they sort of confirmed that it was big reprogramming happening. It's like upgrading from Windows previous version to Windows next version. So it was a big upgrade of the spiritual software, but, but the path of Uniting in a telepathic nation or in telepathic species will take another several generations. So, it, it's not a single and single moment. Uh, speaking about single moments, they, uh, they are working hard preventing big ecological disasters, big wars, and um, uh, I guess that covers all uh, big disasters and big wars. So, uh, right now they're working on the on the weather and on the melting of the ice on earth and uh, they do it sort of secretly uh, our governments obviously know about that but but um they don't the the mass consciousness the mass media the mass public sort of is is artificially silenced and it's supported on both sides the governments don't want uh the awareness they would not want disclosure because it will shake their at least they perceive that it will shake their control and they are afraid it will create a big, big disaster, big uh, meltdown of everything. Our balance is very delicate and uh, it's based on, you know, on, on a lot of, on, on the war, military pro uh, weapon production and financial manipulations. If you uh, announce that aliens are helping and around, then uh, obviously the people wouldn't want to pay taxes for military. Uh, developments and for the weapons and that will 
basically shake the economy and, and obviously the governments don't want that to happen they will lose their control and the aliens don't want the premature contact because um they're not ready because the first open contact they're still not ready they're still working on that and they have the plan like every time it's next year next year now it's it's uh, their plan the last plan we heard about two months ago was for the end of next year so so they, they need about another year to prepare and uh, the fact that they started the colonies in may uh, move them way forward in uh, preparing for the contact, but still they have to at least to educate themselves, prepare the people who are qualified to speak to humans. Um, next uh, event, which is uh, essential, is uh, an economic meltdown. Um, we spoke uh, several times with uh, an ancient god, a group consciousness called L E L. It's, um, it is in our culture in many ways, um, the names Michael, uh, Samuel, Raphael, all of that has, have that L in that meaning praising God. L is a synonym of God. And it's not the God, the big creator, it's part of it. It's part of it responsible for a distribution of wealth in civil, different civilizations and between other life forms like animals, plants. They are watching over financial systems in about 99% of the galaxy. Lyrans don't use it now, but they used to use L services before. And other 99% of civilization in the galaxy use L. Right now, L is secretly manipulating the Earth economy, but it's not full, in full control of economy. Uh, the, the humans are in full control of economy. The human financial leaders are in full control of economy. So, and L seems look uh, L and the God Creator, according to L, um, decided that the best way and the only way to save our civilization from from suicide is to change the uh, the financial system. So they uh, plan the economic meltdown, and they will uh, do that through hands of others. They are spiritual, they don't do it by themselves, but they do it by manipulating humans spiritually and aliens to send the messages to humans to create a meltdown by 2027, at 2027. That's their plan. So we have 13 years, and according to El, to El um, about half of population of Earth will perish in about five months of 2027 economic meltdown. Uh, do I believe this? I believe that it's not created by Jim and I. I believe that message is genuine. Uh, will it happen? I'm not sure. Many other predictions were very dark and it didn't happen in our reality. And this is because we have choices. So we have the warning and we have 13 years to reduce that chance of losing 4 billion people to to zero. So we, if, if we voluntarily do the reforms, then we don't need to do that meltdown. But, but it's uh, we are a long way, long way from, from, you know, from avoiding it. I divided the number. So we, in, in 2000, uh, 2027, uh, the population of the world will be 8 billion, supposedly, and anyway, just it's fair to predict it will be 8 billion. So 50% of that is 4 billion. And 13 years, which we have, is about 4,000 days. So if you divide 4 billion by 4,000 days, you get uh, 1 billion. So every day, by delaying the reform, we lose about a million people. That's a simple calculation. So 4 billion divided by 4 years is 1 million per day. So we have to hurry to to fix our economy, fix our uh, corrupt government and things of that sort. Uh, and obviously I don't call for any... I'm, I'm from, from Russia and I lived through uh, economic brain down in Russia and I'm very happy and I saw the traces of revolution and I understand revolution is not the way to go. Uh, more violence just gives opportunity for negatives to take over the control. So the only only positive open reform is is the way to go, not not the war. So we, we need to really start opening openly thinking and helping our good parts of our government, good parts of our military to reform. 
even after the reform, 2027 reform, after changing the thing, we'll still have the need for the government, still need the need for the banks in collaboration with L, and still will need for military, which will be first working like a police preventing the war uh, on Earth, second um, helping in disaster preventing, um, just saving human lives in uh, in all the ecological things, and third, protecting the earth from outside, from outside invaders, which uh, which exist. And um, right now, we are being guarded by uh, our alien friends from from reptilian and Orions who want to take over the control. Um, that's about the summary. And now, Jim will uh, will channel whoever comes through. We invite our friends from uh, from the uh, previous uh, communications. Also, we invite new new. Um, new new races and civilizations to speak to us and we invite gods and uh, parts of the god and high level consciousness to speak to us and obviously the humans from the colony also are welcome to use the technical means to channel through gym and nina of course is welcome to speak I have been sent here to speak to you about your ecological situation. Thank you much. My name is Pendasaw. Pendasaw? Just call me Pen. Pen? Pen. So Pendasaw Pen. I am from the Federation of Light Workers. Welcome. I'm very happy that you came through to speak to us. Your ecology is changing at such a rapid rate. There is much for us to do. Channeling is secondary at this time with the great melting and the great storms that are developing. Mm -hmm. Rook Vignier is helping with the storm and disaster relief, meaning that they are making the storms less deadly. Mm -hmm. We are not being very successful with the, the rapidity of the melting of ice. Mm -hmm. This has happened many times in your culture, not culture, history of the world. Yes. But it is happening much faster this time. I understand. This is a great concern okay. for the cities of the coasts. Yes. So New York will be flooded. They have to go to New Jersey, right? We are trying to prohibit that. We would prefer they move inland. Mm -hmm. What race are you from? Not important. Okay. Just, I am one of the light workers from the Federation. So is the Federation helping with the climate things or it's just Gokhvitnir? 
Grook Vickneer is helping with climate processes. Okay. We are helping in other ways. We are sending messages to Earth in many ways. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. There are multi-dimensional ways to connect with some humans personally, but we prefer a unilateral communication. Are you following our website, humancolony.org? We are aware there is a part, a section of our federation that does so. Uh, so the website humancolony.org is designed and uh, it has about 200 volunteers who want to com work closely with you to develop the open contact. So we want to help you and Gork Fitnir in any way possible. Please come visit us. Please show up in the skies. Give us signs and communicate it to us in way, every way possible. And we'll be happy, every one of us, submit an application. We'll be happy to visit you up there in the space. There is much evidence that we are around. There have been many sightings all over the world. These cannot be denied by government, officials, or the populace of your planet. There are many other signs as well. There have been visitations in small, out-of-the-way places that have gathered information and have been broadcast to the world. These cannot be denied. They have been studied and proven to be true. We do not need to send any more evidence than what is already here. But let me tell you, there will be more. You will be seeing more sightings. There will be more personal invitations. There will be more visitations. And there will be communications in other ways. Some of your technology will be interrupted at times, and people will not know why, but we will make it clear that we are there. Let me share my personal experience. I work on that. It's my main passion to help the humanity, to help the open contact. And I'm doing that interview right now with you, and I've never seen a ship, I've never see, had any evidence personally never been contacted and never seen an alien. I would be happy to do whatever possible to, to move forward, move closer to that contact. For me, that personal experience would be very essential. You know, experiencing talking to aliens, not through channel, but, but in person would be great. Obviously, whatever works, what is the next step? I would like love to communicate with you face to face. You are already a believer. Yes. And we will perhaps help you believe even stronger. Thank you. The fact that you have not left your planet as of yet has much to do with family ties in the universe. Does that make sense? No. Uh, family ties on Earth, yes, but why are they family ties in the universe? I don't understand that. You, you have hybrid children. Yes. There is a reason why you haven't been taken because of hybrid children. It doesn't make any sense. It does to many of us that are up in the universe. Is it a secret why having children there prevents me from going visiting you, for example? At this time, it prevents you from leaving your world. That doesn't make, make sense, but thank you for explaining that. At least it, it gives a puzzle which can be solved. Is there anything else which you would share? Right now, my mission was just to share that the ecological development of your planet is in need. Um, do you have the same gods that we do? Do you believe in the same gods? We have the same gods. If you would break that down into the one who is many and the many who yes. are one, the names change, but the entity remains the same. 
you can help us because you're speaking about the weather. Can you give us a prayer how to help the weather? There's not a prayer developed for that at this time, but we should develop one that is very logical. Can you share a prayer for, from your culture which we could use? A prayer about what? Praising God's and life. I was not prepared for this. One moment. Okay. Let me check with one of my advisors. Thank you. It has been told to me that you use prayers and poetry for yes. communication to the planet. Yes. Is this been useful? Um, how can we know? That's the, we are told by our alien friends that it is useful. That's all I can say. Very well. I will speak it in English. The nucleus cannot be touched by those flying around the nucleus. Protons, electrons, positrons, these all are like our God. They cannot touch us but to leave us with gratitude for existence. And the neutron, neutrino, falls through us and we never know. Looking for the edge of the universe with praise to complete its circle around the universe. And we praise God for those things that make up the world, the universe and the sky. Thank you very much. It was very human and very unusual, very alien as well. Thank you very much. It's very helpful. Uh, that is one of the Proofs, I guess. It's emotional proof that we don't have. So it helps. It moves it forward. I really appreciate your visit. I do not know if I spoke the poem correctly. It made all sense. It sounds like a human poem and it makes perfect sense. It was not translated well. Uh, we'll try to modify English. But the, 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 the idea was transferred really well. I mean, that's a nice idea. Yes, I'm thinking about it all the time. Very well. I must go now. I appreciate your visit. Come over uh, more often. Blessings. Blessings. We have fixed the problems earlier of the colonies. Okay. And we have attained permissions that were otherwise not attained. Okay. 
I wanted to let you know that. I'm, uh, it's a riddle. Uh, who are you and which problems and which permissions? I am Nina, Father. Oh, hi, Nina. You sound different today. Oh, thank you. So you fix the problems. No, uh, congratulations with that. And thank you for <laughs> obtaining permissions. That's wonderful. The difference in my voice would be the difference in the connection. Okay, I understand. I interpret it now, yes. <coughs> I'm very happy to speak to you. Thank you. The last communication was very essential for me. Thank you. It was essential for me as well. Uh, uh, there is not much change in the colonies at this time. Let's think about them, uh, talk about important things. So you read my letters, right? Yes. Do you have any answers to those? Which answers do you want? Hmm. So I cannot answer. The new colony. What was the reaction? Nothing, or was there any reaction? All proposals are given to these do to give to the Arcturians if he deems them. Rational. Okay. So basically, we don't know any movement on that part. I have not been notified. Okay. Um, thinking about the saving of 2027 disasters, um, is there any ideas where we can help? So it, I, I guess we d neither you nor I know the answer. So what could we do? What should we do to prevent losing 4 billion people in 13 years? The more that you commune together, the more that your vibrations will rise together, this will give you an idea of how to prevent many casualties. Having zero casualties is unreasonable, but having way less casualties is definitely plausible. So, come in together, talk to friends, yes. make it meaningful. Keep your light net. Mm -hmm. Keep your light net visible. Mm -hmm. Keep your light net bringing people in. For this way, you will protect one another from severities. I understand. What else should we discuss? One moment. Connection is... Connection is... One moment. There is someone else coming through. Okay. It was nice talking to you. And come over again if you can, if you have an opportunity. Even today, it would be nice. Thank you. So. She was needed back at the colony. Okay. And so I came. Like cash. Yes. So. What's important? Everything's important. No, yeah, no, everything is nonsense. We're speaking mostly nonsense and few pieces like ecological disaster was important. There were yes. some problems in the colony, there were some decisions. I guess these are main things. Yes, but everything is important in its own way. Of course. But what ecological disasters are on the high list, yes. All right. There is much going on in that realm. Um, they are discovering even faster econo ecological... I know that. They already said that, yes. yes. So who is yes. working on that? Uh, all of Brookfrick near some of uh, the Federation of Light Workers. <coughs> Some uh, and other species that will remain nameless. 
All right. Are they coordinating well? <laughs> they are coordinating better than they were, yes. All right, how is your how are your celebrations going? Celebrations are all wonderful. And you know each one is so different and each one is so wonderful. I just love them. They're very uplifting and they're very filled with uh new thoughts because you learn something new about whoever the celebration is for. You learn something new about yourself when you're connecting to that person. So it it's always good. When you look at me, can you see now my chakras? Uh, not without, not through Jim, but 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 by yourself. Can you see my chak chakras? I can see them. Yes. Uh, are they spinning in the right direction? Yes. Because we have that uh, diagnostic tool in uh, Reiki. When you spill the spin the pendulum, nice. uh, sometimes you say the pendulum is spinning other direction, so the chak chakras are spinning the wrong direction. Is it true that chakras can spin the wrong direction? Yes. It is possible. It is not a good thing, but it is possible. When someone is near death, chakras can move in the opposite direction as well. They kind of unscrew and then stop, right? Correct. They especially the crown. The crown will move in an opposite direction and pull the energy out of the other chakras. So all our DNA is right-handed spiral, like right-handed screw. Mm -hmm. Is it somehow connected to the direction of the chakras? Or it's uh, unrelated? Um, it, it's related, but it's also unrelated. There's parts of it that's related and parts of it that are unrelated. Now, I know that sounds paradoxical, but you have to understand that when you're, that we're always in a, in a state of releasing and bringing in. Yes. So that way they, there's a part of them that's are the forward and the backward. Do you uh -huh. see? Yes, yes. And the backward is behind the forward. Do you understand? Like in DNA, one strand is front strand and another one is behind. Yes, that's right. So is one strand sending the energy? Is somehow the front strand of the DNA is a forward movement and the rear strand is rear movement? Is it like that? It's similar to that, yes. But they're not directly connected. They're Correct. They're not directly connected, but they do have the same logic behind them. That They do have the same, uh, I don't know what the word is. They have the same science behind them, I think. Is there any species in there which you would know that has left strand a DNA strand? Um, I would have to look and see, but there's probably someone out there that does. Because I would think so. We found that everything exists that you can possibly imagine. So if you can imagine it, it probably exists. All right. You can't find on Earth uh, an honest car salesperson. I don't understand that. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, that's just a profession. You have to be a liar to sell cars. Otherwise, you wouldn't sell any cars. I disagree. You need to go somewhere in a car. Someone would have to buy a car, no matter who sold it to them. All right, you have to study that too. I guess I will. <laughs> but I would think a car is essential at your level of ev evolution. All right, I will explain. So there is a competition. Yes. And competition is huge. It's not only in car sales. It's in any economy and in, in information media. So... Uh, if there was no competition, yes, of yeah. course, you offer, here is a car, give me an honest price, and person would sell it, or would buy it. But, but when you try to sell it on the market with a lot of advertisement, uh, whatever you propose will not be heard. So you have to go out of your way to sell things. And you have to go out of, of your way to deliver information to people, because people are deafened by propaganda. Deafened by propaganda. So, you know, in normal situation, you wouldn't have to uh, promote my website. I wouldn't have to promote. I would just put it there and people would find it. But, but it doesn't happen. I have to go out and say, hey, here is my website. Look at it. And people say, mm, maybe. So you understand now? No. But I, the logic is retarded. But 
Because you need the car to travel, you would buy it anyway. There's competition. I hear the competition part, but if you go to one and you do not like it, you go to another and buy a car. Yeah, but if I want to sell a car, say I want to sell a car. I mean, I was in that situation uh, and somebody else. I understand. I understand now. Yes. Yes, you're saying that the person selling the car tells you what you want to hear so you will buy from them. Yes. I see. I understand now. Because logically, you would buy a car no matter who it is, eventually. It happens sometimes, yes. It happens sometimes. But I was in that situation. I wanted to sell my car, and I couldn't. I see. I couldn't sell it for any so price. You buy the car from the person that you trust the most. Yes. Okay. I understand. And I try to do different pro offer different services, and I know the service is right. I know I give a good price, but people are so fed with lies. They didn't believe me that it's good for them. They would rather go with traditional ways and change their provider. I see. Yes, I understand. I have learned something new about the Earth culture today. Yeah, humans are so damaged by the experience. You know, if person I comes see. to me and says, "Here is." thousand dollars for you i wouldn't take it because i would believe it is a crook ah and these are most people would do that children probably not but adults they're so confused they wouldn't really take the gift if it was given ah from a stranger i see i must study that more <laughs> because i know gifts are given from strangers that are accepted sometimes yes you look at the eyes and see if you believe it. But that's real. I appreciate your visit. Do you have anything else? Did you bring anything else? Any poetry? Anything new? Oh, no poetry today, Max. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak to you, Lakesh. Thank you. I have got to go back. I am going to be entering a class very shortly. What class? Neutral Biophysics. Neutral mean nutritional? Yes. Oh, finally. All right, excellent. So you will take some biochemistry because I need your biochemical background. And for you, it's very easy to learn. Look, so I'm doing the project and I'm trying to move it forward for several years already. Mm -hmm. And I need help from aliens. Obviously, so far they didn't give me the direct help, but... Basically, I'll have a little bit of money, say, enough for a few weeks of experiments. And I need to produce a result to get more money, to get real, real experiments working. So the goal which I pursue is very honorable and beneficial for humans. I want a drug, a DNA piece, to be activated by outside radiation. Right now, we're looking at near-infrared light, which is one of the safest. It's used in the controls. I mean, this control would shine the light. I will show you. Mm -hmm. It will shine the light, right? You can see the light in the screen from that thing. It, it, the camera can see it, but humans cannot see. So it's near-infrared. It's about 800 nanometers, just beyond red spectrum. So, and also the sound, ultrasound, uh, radio waves are also safe. So any safe radiation... Yes. Uh, would activate that sequence. Can you give me the sequence? It, you can't even give it on the microphone because it would be like mm, maybe 300 bases, like A, G, C, T, G, C, T, G, A, A, A. So, or, you know, or just tell me where to find it. But, you know, I need that sequence. If the aliens could give me the sequence, I would synthesize the DNA, put in the human cell in a dish or mouse cell in a dish and then shine a light again i need to know which light or which sound mm -hmm. and then activate it and if i find that this sequence is activated then we create a new therapy for anything for mental disorders for arthritis and so on we are learning a sequence at this time for our dna so this would be different of course, because the cell environment would be different. Yes. But I'm pretty sure you, you know, any of your civilizations, Sirius, Pleiadian, your Pleiadian, 
I'm sure you know, you already have that technology. It's not something you have to invent. It's something that you already have mastered. I know that from Adrian Dvir book and other communications, you already have that in great, uh, in great advancements. So for you, it would be easy. It would like, in your class, I think you could easily do just look your you know computer thing and run the program and say, if I take a human cell, what wavelength and what sequence would it be? And it will get the answer. So I think would, about that. Maybe you can give me the sequence. Sometimes it's a short I sequence. It could to be check with these two to see if this information is permitted. Of course, so far this do wasn't able to give me, but I I'm still applying. The last time you received any information, it was faulty and disrupted by some other sources or by the fact that Jim has limitations in knowledge. Yes, Jim has limitations in knowledge. He calls synapses and axons he thinks the same thing and he thinks that chromosomes and DNA is the same thing. Well, well it's not. Chromosomes contain DNA, but they're not, not the same thing. And nucleotide is a unit of DNA. Nucleotide is the base, A, G, C, T. So, but, you know, if he tells me A, G, C, T, G, C, A sequence, I can write it down on the recording, and that would be the answer, and the wavelength in nanometers. That's all I need. And that would be a great breakthrough, and it will help humanity to do healing. Obviously, you can apply any, th any knowledge to damage humans, to mind control humans, to brainwash humans, to kill humans. But, again, we will do it publicly. We'll invite the public attention to that. We'll publish that. So it won't be in hands of negatives. It will be in hands of scientists. And, and we will work actively to prevent misuse of that. I see. The fact that it would be public knowledge would be giving negatives a chance to use it, however. Yes. This is a concern. However, it is not a great concern at this time. But I must tell you, the sequence has already been g given. On, but not, not to the right people. Here you go. So give it to the right people. And also the science is there. The science, it's the next step. It's delayed. It's a logical step which has, was supposed to be done 15 years ago, 10 years ago. And it's delayed. It's maybe even more. Yeah, around 2000 when we sequenced that genome, we were ready for that. So it's the right time for the humanity to have that. I see. This will be considered. Thank you. Communications today are difficult. There is something in the space-time continuum area. I know that does not sound perhaps. No, it sounds right. It's just snowing. You know, if you translate that to humans, it's just snowing right now. It's it's something is interfering, but it is not direly. You're a great communicator, and your communication goes nice and clear. Thank you. I try. Pleasure to have you around. Thank you. I'm going to leave now, though, because Goodbye, it's a Akash. discomfort. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Hi. Ooh. It was a short session today. Uh, hopefully someone else come later, but right now we have a break. Okay. Um, I didn't... Normally I would urge them to stay and ask more and more questions. And this time I felt that maybe we can do more variety and just wait for other people to arrive. There are many entity, entities around. I can feel them. I can feel them. I wish they introduce themselves before so we can choose, pick and choose, but whatever is important. The rept, reptoid? If it is a nice one, we welcome them. There's reptoids around, or reptiles, or whatever they call them. Let's do a break. Reptilians. Let's do a break. Okay. All right, we'll continue. I'll do a little Reiki. So Reiki is a, a technique of energy healing.
by laying on hands so the energy goes. I didn't ask him if the energy goes from right hand to left hand, but I assume it's two-directional. People say also right hand is giving and left hand is receiving. And I feel the energy now, so we'll just do a little break and when I do Reiki on Jim's head, typically somebody comes through at that time, if it's real and if it's appropriate. Hey Taka, nice to have you here. Thank you. I cannot stay long. There is much to do. Okay. There is much information coming in, okay. so I must maintain a flow of outward information. Okay. Did you have a question? Uh, actually, no, but um, let's do the update. So, what is new in the colonies? Did any decisions made? What any decisions made about the people from the website? We really want to go up there, and so far only three have been up there. There is changes in the policies of which we are concerned about the safety of humans. There was an incident. Okay, what was that? It is classified. All right. But I must tell you that. Since this time, there has been much talk about bringing humans to the colonies. But it is still being pursued. We just need a, an adjustment. You see, my calculation shows that we lose a million of humans every day we delay the open contact and we delay the work on saving the humanity. So the lives of individual humans who volunteer and want to take risks are not as important. That's why I propose to create a new colony of higher risk. So these will be the people from the website who know, understand the risk and uh, are ready to take that risk to help the humanity. So that solves a lot of problems. Obviously, the aliens have to be protected as well. But, but basically, let's create a human colony which is more designed for just random visitors. Even MIC people would be invited to visit. And we just, the colony just has to be designed in a way that it should be protected from that. And, and a lot of humans would take the risk and go there. And you know whatever happens, happens. You have given this suggestion before. Yes. It has been sent to the Arcturians. No answer has been given for this as of yet. All right. And long term also helps. If you know if a person goes there long term then, you know, he is not in danger of coming back. There are developments in that area. Okay. Are you playing volleyball in the colonies? They are playing soccer. Soccer. Are you playing any sports with humans? No. You tried and it, you didn't like it? I do not have time for that. Oh, I see. Are there any aliens who play sports with humans? Yes. What species would be that? Pleiadians. You know, how do they accommodate that they to, are they faster, are they uh, more quicker and more talented in these sports than humans? Actually, no, they're slower. Oh, so they can play equally then? Yes. Are they playing chess as well? 
They are playing chess. Who is best in chess? Which species? You, you. Uh huh. And playing cards, like human games of cards. The aliens. Playing as best in cards. Yes. Interesting. Thank you. That helps. Anything else we should know? Uh, anything? Any details about the weather? Why is it? Few days change and a huge change in the weather. So these are energy, Earth energies. It is the rotation and orbit of Earth. It has changed. Orbit of Earth. The actual orbit, yes, changes all the time. However, it's gone into a different kind of change. I understand. Do you want to detail that? Which kind of change, or you can translate it? Well, first of all, the Earth has slowed down over many millennium. Okay. And the orbit has changed slightly with the speed of the orbit. Okay. And since there are many storms and ecological changes in Earth, all right. it has affected the orbit as well as the th three percent tilt in excess correct okay so it's warbling okay so spinning of the earth is somehow connected with the melting of the ice caps yes should we prepare to leave the coastlines anytime soon, next weeks, months? No, it will take 50 to 100 years, but this is not a long period of time. I understand. I understand. We must be able to stabilize. So, I guess other colonies working on that as well? Yes. Perfect. We need basically the the broadcasts. We have brought up seven scientists. Perfect. So we need to develop the broadcasts. The Who reason would... for these scientists yes. are that they can communicate with the telepaths and they can communicate with us. Yes. We need to develop the broadcasts where humans would explain humans the rational to move away from the coastlines. The maps are there, but the maps are pretty bad. They don't explain much. I mean, they're especially confused. There are really very few good maps on the internet. Uh, so we need to explain when it should be done, in which order, and this should be governmental projects. And in many cases, these are poor countries. So. This should be a United Nations project where people are helped to relocate. They should be given citizenships or relocation passes. All these formalities on human sites have to be done. And if it is 50 years, I mean, it should be should start as soon as possible. You know, people have to be planning weather. Like, I have been in, you know, New York City and New Orleans, and the floods are real there, so they have to really uh, change the policies there to plan to leave the city in the 50 years. That's That has to be done in a very direct, bureaucratic, official way, and as soon as open contact, contact is ready, that would be one of the major themes of the contact. The colonies have to do that work. This information is already available. Yes, but uh, the open contact will give it weight. Right now it's suppressed. Correct. There is reasons for this. Oh, reasons for suppressions, positive reasons from aliens? Correct. Which reasons would be that? There are governmental issues. I know you cannot understand that, but it is relevant to the success of First Contact. I, I, at least I can uh, acknowledge that. I understand that there are issues of that sort. I'm familiar with that. Bashar also mentioned many times that 
they cannot criticize many of the things of the parties which with, with which they have a, a official diplomatic contact. So they have Correct. to silence those things. I'm familiar, I'm familiar with that. Yes, this is the essential truth. Is how, how is Bashar doing? Is he doing any negotiations with, uh, with the Earth? That is classified. Interesting. Uh, how are the negotiations between Gorkfitnir and Gorkfitnir and Federation of Light? Is there any uh, official much, things achieved? Much improvement on communications. Much more interaction and agreement on certain levels of initial contact. Also on communication with humans, it varies from good to fair. Did that communicate well? Our communication with humans from good to fair doesn't make any sense. With the light workers, our communications move from fair to good. No, from fair to it makes sense. Okay. So you mean that the channelings became more informative? More informative, yes. I didn't notice that. I looked at them and they are as shallow as before. There is underlying subtext. So they're slowly moving to better. Yes. They are subliminal in many senses. I understand that. Yes, I understand that many humans appreciate this poetic very shallow but light-hearted messages but you know they can do but you know these are like 99 percent of these messages are of that kind and we need to address not only the light-minded humans but more practical humans and more practical messages are needed and i would invite light workers from galactic federation and elsewhere to send more practically oriented messages as well there is a reason for their lightness they're easier to communicate on subliminal levels with the lightness of a message. It gets in faster and helps them to raise their vibration. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I, I understand and I always understood that. Yes. The I, messages will eventually become more diverse. Okay, very good. Have been any official agreements achieved between Gorkfitnir and Federation of Light? Not official, but there has been some officiality with other species in Gorkfitnir. Uh-huh. I have spoken to Andromedans. Are these the only Andromedans around? Is it another kind of Andromedans who are also around this help in the Earth? There are Andromedans, yes. Only one species, only one kind. There are two. Are, are the others important in Earth project? They are more they have only the interests of watching the experiment. Okay. I spoke to Andromedas only once and they seem to be they, they introduced themselves, but they didn't show up anymore. Do, would you recommend for them to communicate, for me to and them to communicate more? Is there any in common interest which we could develop? They weren't interested in the project of the colonies, and they weren't given much information away, except that they, you know, about their physiology and their positive help in the tours and their ship of 26 miles. They so, will be back. Okay. They are involved in communications with other species that are helping Earth. Very good. Very good. Who else is... Do you know who else is what wants to speak to us and uh, just introduce themselves or you can't really uh, tell that? I am not at liberty to give you that information. Okay, thank you. But I am... needed back. All right. 
I really appreciate your visit and we learned something new. Thank you very Whoa. much for coming through. Thank you. Waha. Bhakti. Kirpan. One, two, three, one, two, three. Hello, hello. All right, so let me see if it's recording fine. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Yes, it's recording fine. So Jim is cooking pasta, and I wanted to <laughs> use time to speak about something. So what topic do we want to start with? Whatever, go ahead. Pleiadians, I guess. Okay, what do you want to know about them? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's introduce them somehow. Um, so Pleiades is a nice cluster of stars, and I know in ancient world they tested this, the vision by how many stars you can see in Pleiadian cluster. And some people see seven, some people see nine. When I when my vision was good, I think I saw about thirteen maybe. But uh, it seems to be lo lo lots more. But it, Apparently, they're not that far from us in uh, Milky Way galaxy, and I remember by heart only one star, which is Taigeta. And But, you know, they are all in Wikipedia, you can look it up. Uh, but, uh, so we're in contact with, with uh, actually three kinds of Pleiadians. Uh, two come through Jim and one comes through another channeler. Um, uh, so one, one group of Pleiadians is called Errans, they live on planet Era, so we live on planet Earth, and somewhere in the channel they said that four-dimensional Earth is called Terra, which is fine, but it is an ancient word for, for Earth, I think, in one, one of the languages, maybe Greek or, or Latin, maybe Greek. Yes, I'm not sure. All right, so, so Terra, uh, we are Terrans then, uh, Earthlings or Terrans, and they are Errans. And this is a nice, beautiful planet, and we have reports from this planet from other sources as well. These are tall humans, sometimes they are blonde, very often they are blonde, uh, very often they are blue-eyed, but this, you know, in this period of time they have a, a fashion, mm -hmm. a fashion to wear uh, green. And because they are very advanced, they were able to genetically put the green color right in their skin so they are like plants synthesizing the energy from light. So they are more ecological this way. So it's popular to be green, even the skin would be green. Yes, that's now true. Now you can talk about them if you like. Yeah, it's popular for them to be green. You fit in better. I know that Peter is green. Uh-huh. And that... Um, I don't know a whole lot about them, but I know that they are very, very friendly, very mild mannered. At least the the ones from Era are very mild mannered, very giving, uh, empathic, and uh, of course uh, telepathic. And um, they uh, live in the fourth dimension now. Yes. And um, but all species were originally third dimension. So yes. they move they move up as they get as uh things move along in their cultures. Uh-huh. So let's focus on Pleiadians. Have you ever seen one? No, I haven't. Only the shadows of them what when I when I channel I can see the their their shadows sort of. Uh-huh. But that's all I can see. I don't really see their faces or so Tepe is our contact in uh, among errands uh, when he comes through how, how does he feel how do you feel him I just he's in my brain most of the uh, most of the aliens just come into the my head but Lakesh the blue comes into the your blue body Biden, yes. comes into your body but um, most of them just come into your head uh -huh. and they don't really feel your body and I don't feel the, them, but I hear them. Uh -huh. That's it. I hear them in this off to the side a little. What can you tell about Tepe? Tepe is the more quiet, actually. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very intellectual, hardworking. Um, a very wonderful person, uh -huh. and um, 
a very wonderful alien, I should say. And um, he uh, is caring about the human race a lot right now. So, What is his profession? He's... He's actually a sub commander from of uh, Dee's Do, and he's helping with the uh, the weather and the and the seismic things as well. Where is he working? He's working in the ship that's uh, in the uh, North American contact, continent. About yes. Yeah. So, so they all know a bit about North America. What what do you know the shape of the ship of the ship? No, I don't. Uh, we never asked them what the uh -huh, shape of the ship uh -huh. was, but um, I do know that it moves from place to place in North American continent, even into Canada and down into Mexico at times. So, but it goes where it needs to go to help weather conditions, some seismic conditions, and whatever they find um, that may be too severe. So. I remember one of the first conversations with um, Tepe, and um, what characterized him was that he was describing something about spirituality, <laughs> describing something about spirituality and negativity, yeah. and he used analogy from weather. He used the analogy of uh, air fronts in the weather where uh, you know, cold air moves and hot air moves and things of that sort. He tried to explain the spirituality through weather patterns, and that's a signature of uh, a weather specialist. He was so much immersed in, in controlling the weather and thinking about that that he couldn't find a better analogy other than talking about the, <laughs> the clouds and, you know, for me, it was a foreign analogy, and I thought that illustrates that he is real. I mean, that well, the fact that he talks about the weather when, when even not invited uh, illustrates that he was very real and really speaking, really working on the weather. And and that's basically his specialty. Other aliens we speak to have other speciality, specialties, but he was more focused on weather and stuff. <coughs> Another thing that um, kind of uh, characterized him, he was easily upset. He was uh, disappointed about Earth governments. When, uh, when we started talking in May, he said that they first agreed for something, some positive move, and then representatives, I guess, not the whole government, but representatives, some people, and then they backed away and changed their mind breaking up the the commitments at that time so he was disappointed and, and i said to him that that uh you know don't you like the don't you follow the law of attraction by being disappointed kind of attract more negativity to your life and he said no for him for them in four dimension it doesn't apply which i don't believe that it is the case but in any case he he is easily negative and depressed, and uh, not as far as we do, but but he gets upset and disappointed. Uh, again, you know that's maybe a sign of a good person. Um, it is a sign of a good person. He is uh, he is caring, yes. And in general, Pleiadians seem to be often condescending in their style when they when they ch at least when they channel I didn't speak to them directly but when they channel they are seem condescending and sort of a little bit upright and proud of them and looking at us down which is maybe the case they still helping and trying to help they they they're nice um and they're part of that Gork Fitnier Alliance, which uh, which is uh, doing the Earth project and preparing the first contact. I'll pause now and we'll continue maybe later.